Hello there everyone and thank you for joining me here at the start of a new campaign in Old Rural Blues A to Z in which we are playing as the Big Grass and I'll be very honest here it feels weird for me to play as this nation cause uh I don't know, I might have been told not to play it a couple times, but just because due to other reasons that we're not going to explain right now, I'm excited to play as Big Grass because we're led by a Relcom. Reliable Communications was once a dissident, imprisoned by the experiments before the war. Converted into a robo-brain to fuel their war machine, some now call him Mad to Relcom. Man's natural state is to be an exploiter, consuming resources for his own benefit and oppressing others. How much better would we all be if we were robo-brains? No longer driven by greed or lust or envy, just simply working together in harmony. A shame that not everyone agrees with his view, but that's what the processing facility is for. They are watching me. Less stability, more war support, required distance goes down, less people support, more ruler support, and are also a cruel tyrants, so... Uh, we love the rulers, but reliable communications. Uh, long ago, in a sorrow-filled or crested hills of Canada, where a man was made into a machine, the birth of Relcom, long before the war, a man was taken. From a roadside by men in black, this man's identity is lost to time. With the last who cared to know killed uh, alongside a snatching, his mind was harvested and placed into an experiment, itself a derivative of robo-brain technology. Though only a work-in-progress name, it was known as Relcom Unit, or Reliable Communications. The machine, while only slightly larger than your average rubble brain, and with only a couple more appendages than your usual, is capable of interfacing with an entire facility, semi-remotely, imperfect, but, inca but capable. Worldcom was entrusted with much of the day-to-day -day of the robo brain production facility he hosted in, or was hosted in. Though unintended, he held much sway over what came to be in the facility, with Canadian dissidents growing bolder as their friends and family disappeared into the families or facilities, crimson lit doors. Rolcom knew he could prioritize securing the factory's walls from intruders, or improve the factory's resource production, therefore speeding up their work. Which did he pursue? An iron line against his enemies. Ooh, I like the population. That bunkers are nice. Every cow must be milked. Oh, you know me, I'm a giant milker. Oh, we're gonna be milking here. Little red books. Rolcom reads things he should not be reading. Was it a teenage boy or something? But besides the little red bucks, we got the first red strike down. This is not the first time Relcom has woken up, but it'll be the last. As we have a cup of tea here. Nice green tea to keep us nice and warm. The most peculiar, peculiar little thing. When left to one's own devices for too long, one can often think uh, much on too many things. For some, it's a matter of which life is lived, whether it be their own or elsewise. Otherwise, or others, however, may think on simpler things, such as dinner, or what their wife does while they're at work, but Relcom thought about society. As he crept through the laboratories, and as he crawled along the facility's uh, chasmus chambers, he would often see slackers, wretched dogs who would do little yet gain equal credit. What's sick in his, his giga brain, even was even the executives, the uptight mongrels who ordered them yet did nothing themselves. He hated everything of it, the incessant, uncaring demands they made, the sickly ways they ordered a lower egghead to prepare their coffee. Uh, he began to look to, into other means of thought, schools that he was told were forbidden to him. Digging through the possessions of one of the senior scientists, he found a little red book, itself emblazoned with iconography. He knew he was not meant to see, then he did the unthinkable. He began to read it. My, my, what red flavor! Hush, little commie, don't say a word. Oh, very nice. And open up the casket, or local incidents. Well, I want the stability. The Scarlet Casket, as some of the locals have come to know it as, is a colossal robo-brain production facility, nestled within the northern reaches of Alberta, twice. The production has stopped within, the, within its halls, once when the bombs fell, another when the capitalizer came through. Rokom thought long and hard about the book and its contents for a time. He wondered of its possibility to be equal and among the peers. He thought it was the ultimate dream of any true individual. Surely, even so, as he silently studied his colleagues within the facility, he saw the bitter dejection of the lower scientists and the hacky need cackling of the executives, and it made him think, why was it like this? For a time, it troubled him greatly. Why would people delight in such suffering? Why would they stomp upon their fellow men and women with such ferocity? The answer came like a dream, and a nostalgic feeling of goosebumps settling over his brain matter. They were disillusioned by their own body. It was a simple betrayal, really. The human experiment itself had failed many times across many generations. Metal, though, metal was eternal in ways that flesh could not be. It was beyond skin color, beyond weight, beyond anything. It was merely beyond what that was the simplest truth that could be told. Overnight, Rock almost set to his new manifesto, turning all of his peers into the same machino form that he had become. Many struggled, but others were simply caught unaware and were unable to fight him and his stern machines. Before I knew it, he had an army, and then the bombs fell. Not even the end of the world could stop me. Decimation begets reclusion. Reclusion begets disillusion. Um, is that army XP worth it, or is that political power worth it? Oh, look at this. Asymmetric warfare research speed. Well, that's for me, but not for thee. A uh, faint fail not. Automated warfare failure is not an option because it statistically is impossible, according to my calculations, and Chairman Boyd Grayson. This is really unique. 
Interesting, I'm gonna go with fail, uh, fail not. So, um, big band. Uh, I'm gonna read through all these later, but. Compliance, growth, peace, unfed. Weekly manpower, chairwoman, chairwoman Amelia Tremblay, Warhawk. The foreman, fossil fuel. <laughs> Uh, the sickle, right arm of communism. Oh god, the left. Oh god, we're gonna get a communist civil war, aren't we? All right, so we're gonna go uh, put the power. Oh, I like the worst part though. Not even the bomb could stop progress. Even after the nuclear holocaust ravaged the earth, Rokom survived alongside his mandated brethren, thriving within the depths of the facility for decades. He would hide, sending only the most remote of scouts out to gather additional supplies as they were needed. For years, wanderers would disappear when they came too close to the factory. Like rabbits delivering themselves to wolves, legend spoke of the many-legged machine, how he would drag your children away never to be seen again. Welcome delighted in these terrors, but pay them no mind. Those who, who were not of the Union mind could not understand his motive. Eventually, when he grew bolder, he began sending out more and more and more people began disappearing. So soon after, however, someone had enough and one of the assaultrons of the facility did not return, distraught. Rokom ordered search parties, but no one were able to find anything. Instead, they, some disappeared. Rokom was at a loss, anger and a tragedy fell over him. One assault drone was worth so much, his trials did not last long, however, for soon after, a new force had arisen within the uh, area, the Capitalizer. What is this gross mockery? Freedom incarnate. Her origins were unknown. Her existence was unknown. Her very purpose was unknown, at least until she destroyed several Rokom's patrols. Only when they came face to face did more become clear to Rokom. The Capitalizer, his most hated enemy, was the very same assault drone he had lost, but clearly modified into some disgusting American mascot, a hellish mirror to contrast his own. For freedom, she cried for liberty. Whomever its designer was, however, its systems were programmed. He was too enamored with rage to question it. In this rage, he lost himself, and the capitalizer was able to decimate the factory by her lonesome, leaving Rolcom buried under the factory rubble a second time. Decades passed, and soon, like his brothers and sisters, he fell asleep. No comma keeps me down. And then local incidents. The wicked little capitalist flushings lurk out there, contributing nothing but taking everything. This must be addressed. Precaution must be taken, lest the capitalizer notices, takes notice of my resurgence. Can we use the capitalizer? We have the... Murdalizer. We have the capitalizer here too. Huh. I love this unique nation in this 5.0 update. Um yeah, look at this guy. Robo brain production facility. Our automated facilities will convert our country's manpower into robo brains over time. How does that work? Hush little calm, you don't say a word. Interesting. Well, who is this deputizer? So, although I prefer to have every human converted into a robo brain, the truth of the matter is that it takes time to do so. It's a sad fact that some humans have to serve in our military, even as shock troops, but that's a sacrifice I'm willing to make. With the deputizer in charge of the training, I trust that they will make quite the expendable vanguard. With them as a front and our powerful battle bots behind them, no one will be able to withstand the full force of our military. You can try to hide, but in every corner there will be a soldier with a gun. If you kill him, then another will take his place. You cannot escape our labyrinth. Felt not. Uh, before the nuclear annihilation of the United States, Failnot was a machine learning AI in development by the Canadian Armed Forces R&D Department. Failnot was designed in response to the multiple advanced AIs that the U.S. had in its arsenal. Sadly, the U.S. annexed Canada, meaning that its development halted and sat for many years. However, one day I was unearthed by Relcom in a document. It journeyed for a long time, eventually finding its last lo known location. Not long after, it was brought online and its training resumed. Now, after hundreds of years, it's ready for its first test. A simple test for it. Rokom insists that it takes command of strategy for the nation's doctrine and battle plans its task. You net the soldiers of big grass into a red wave and wash over the rest of the world. Um, is there something unique here that we don't have? Robo manufacturer, which we'll probably do. I still always like doing the golden gate. M money, stability, but it's always good to do. Opening up the casket, though. And local incidents. And we have four research slots, which is very nice. So what do we want here? Arms workshops. I like that. Ooh, heavy lifter bots. The Red Scare returns. Political power, weekly manpower, new stability. Uh -huh. Automated warfare. Super heavy quadrupods. Holy crap. Same shades, different tones, and superior shades, superior tones. The ideal workforce. Oh, I bought, I bought, what do you see? Overclocking the casket. Our communism is the best kind. Avoiding the capital uh, capitalizer's gaze. In order to prepare for the possible return of the capitalizer, we must expand the capacity of a processing facility and free more of our people from the inferior forms. Enter the capitalizer, red versus blue. Oh god. I wouldn't mind the weekly political power though. But arms workshops, productivity shall return after the break. The capitalizer's fearsome streak took out much of the casket, even after their miserable attack. 
and even after those silly little capitalist dogs infiltrated my domain. The facility's vastness proves it would be a benefit. Awesome, yet survives. All I must do is find the switch. We're here to learn a strong, agile, very good. Um, lead foot's still not terrible. Frontline robots platoons. I assume that wouldn't be bad to do for us. Night. Interesting. And this is Chairman Boy Grayson. With the money the red machine will block out the sun. Ah, uh, Chairman Boy Grayson rose to power after his military service ended. He was once a big grass and soul ace pilot, but now he just tells stories about the olden days. It's no secret that big grass in modern airports is a sight for sore eyes. With no existing production facilities, big grass relies on what little pre-war fighters it has left for in airports. That's why Boy Grayson uses his power a lot before more funding towards the Air Force. And he gets his way on state training programs instead of set up industry and research to make a real red Air Force. It's only a matter of time before big grass will be a force to be feared. Until that day, Boy will be remaining vigilant. Until that day, Big Grass will buy the time to train. Until that day, we'll build an airport that will paint the sky red. We can wait until that day, capitalist dogs, for when it comes, it'll rain red until the world is left in a flood of communism. But, I want to go with robots. Personally. Right now, what are we making? Projectrons, pipe guns, we need them. Oh, wait, what is this? The Strathcom and Big Grass and Lloyd's Ministry and the Pioneer Company are still fighting the Great War in some ways, but recent tensions threaten to turn their on-again, on, on again, off again conflict into a full blown war. They should not grow old. Okay. Um, we're gonna need some heavy tons of bots right now. Because I forgot that the, the north, the far north up here, just kills each other. I completely forgot about that. Actually, what is our technology level, anyways? We're mid on a lot of things, but we got advanced robotics, so or we'll do okay. Special forces not good, power armor not good. Maybe we won't use them in this campaign, we'll see. So if that's the case, we want military factories. Heavy lift robots are going to come in handy, but we're not even using heavy lift robots yet. Savings would be nice. This stuff would be nice to use. A thousand more support robots. That's what we could use immediately. That would be really good. Automated warfare is good. Uh, production costs would even be better. Uh, get less soft attack though. Hmm, 250 political power is awesome. Two arms workshops. It is some more sport, but in all honesty, we could use 200, huh? But a thousand immediately? Yeah. I'm thinking we're gonna race towards this thousand support robots. Collectivization through metal. Only a scant few have joined the Union mine. Even still, we may collect what we can and restore what little has survived the capitalizer's wickedness. Red alert protocols. All bets are off. We must ramp up our robo brain's machine learning skills or tap into what little useful combat knowledge they have nullified. We can't take any chances. The greatest stance is one achieved with grace. Nice. Oh, got 105 days. Yeah, we're definitely not going to have that in time. Um. So these guys have infantry. Oh, but they have empty tanks, so that doesn't really help us. So that's definitely going to help us out. Produce more, 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 more. And rush through all that stuff there. Um, as much as I want to get that, what's Relcom? Oh my god. You're good at a little bit of everything. I can trust none of these fools. Behold the might of the Red Army with me at the helm. I know that none of these pathetic fools can be trusted to be left in charge of my red army, so instead of leaving in charge of these morons, I'll take charge of it myself. With me at the helm, no one will be able to stand against us. I'll use my men, words, and even the corpses of my enemies to slice through the fat of capitalism. Watch out if you don't always want to, if you want to feel the might of the red army. I love that there's unique stuff about these guys. Uh, just for here. Who else have we got? Capitalism. Money equals power. Red or blue, you will not live to see the full extent of the soul arsenal of democracy if you stand against us. Although I'm not, I'm not sure if this capitalist can be trusted as the head of the army, I must admit that he's quite powerful as evident by beating me in the past, so some differences must be set aside. Oh, if you're about the day of infamy, I've read about it before. Please go ahead. Boop. Um, still given the chance, 
this capitalist dog would gladly bid our nation dry of money and resources. Interesting. The Murderlizer. Kill, kill, kill. The Murderlizer is a tool to be used and abused by the commune. Its eloquent dialogue perfectly matches the many deathly mechanical limbs it carries. Originally made by the putrid humans to serve in the army, the prototype was quickly put out of commission after it killed the entire science team in that ville. Its remains were discovered by Rokum in a refuse pile, and while reprogramming took nearly a decade, it finally paid off. The dry blood on its exterior serves as a reminder of the fate of all those who oppose the glory of communism. Slash Defender. With me at the head of our forces, I shall erect the impenetrable wall that all those who oppose us tremble to the might of the strength of our unity. The excavator is a symbol of strength for both the red and blue and the big grass. Although Rolcom hates to admit the second part, he sees a prospect in having such a universal symbol of the strength of the big grass at the helm of its armed forces. It may be possible for Rolcom to stop this from, keeping, from inspiring the blues, but this strength will keep the big grass as a symbol of communism. The excavator himself is a capable leader and puts his men before himself. With the strength, the morale of the whole army uh, will be bolstered. He will dig a trench deep enough to bury the capitalist pigs, a creeping undertaker. With all this power, no one will escape my careful gaze. All that's left to do now is wait. The neutralizer may be best served me at the head of the Red Army. I have someone with high intellect. You can see that they are near a match for my own. I shall leave them at the top of the high military, a military high command in order to ensure our conquest. No doubt the neutralizer will take it immediate control and focus its efforts into boosting its efficiency and conversion of humans to the superior rubble brains. He'll take his time at first, but eventually he'll have his workers' machines running at maximum efficiency. And here we are. Uh, we got about one day left, or a few seconds left, and they shall not grow old. And we're at war with all of them all. Holy crap. Uh, so the main goal is to hopefully encircle and destroy and not get killed ourselves. Because that would really suck. But we'll see, as they all want to kill each other, which I'm okay with. It looks like we've already started making, potentially, one encirclement. As we left our lines completely open. What else do you expect from us? As long as they can't beat us up too much, we're okay with it. Really. Look at that. That's very nice. Yay! Um... So the goal is to keep our... Did you... Wait, did you not... Ah, kill it. Kill the fire. Um, they can pierce us, can't they? Yeah. We got warrior training, which is nice, so... Yeah, we're going to see what happens with all this. Um, I thought we killed that division off, but apparently we did not. We did a lot of damage to it already, though. We only five divisions. Not ideal. That's case. Okay, so we're going to move back up here, towards the center. And do the best we can to encircle. You know what? You keep this division in place. We don't have many divisions, but what we do have is not bad. Hey, look at that. Start pushing back a little bit more. Can you go up to there, maybe? Can you go there? Let's see. You know, um, we are making one division of conscripts just because I don't trust myself with this somewhat. Yep. I don't know. We'll see. Hey, a division encircled. That's what we like to see. And go all up there if we can. Come on, and destroyed. Now go right there. I need you to go right here too. That would be nice. They're not moving yet. You're both moving somewhere here. Takes a while to get over the river, but still. And we're there. Good. Help out, help out. Good. Well, so far we're doing we're doing well, we're being successful. That's what all we all we really want. As we just did the greatest dance. Okay, so we got those thousand support robots. Thank God. Um, our communism is the best kind, huh? Well, political power, weekly manpower. Maybe lifter bots wouldn't be bad. Emergency production quotas. Where the war underway, we must take great care in producing as many metal shells as possible for newly induced brethren. Absolutely. I'd rather you go here. They have special forces too, huh? How special are your special forces? Uh, okay, you can't do that. You go with something like that, maybe? You got a nice? Well, how about you don't get encircled? You ding dong. Work is needed. Nice. Get down here too. Hey, look at that. Another robot, thank god. We need you right now anyways. Whew. Also, I do apologize for the auto being a little loud at the beginning of the video because I did not know. I might have completely had to reinstall the mod and whatnot. It's all in reinstall. So, yeah. Come on, come on. We're almost there. We're so close. Okay. 
you all now attack here. That's the way to beat him up. Oh, you're not moving in there. And you're not moving in there. We gotta cut these divisions off from like moving too fast. Oh, actually, you decided to get kind of encircled yourself right there. Uh, for now, we're gonna have this person and have a lot of defense with the excavator. Be inspirational. Not sure what else I want for this group. Oh. Musk. Keg. Muskhead. Hey, look at you. Nice. Alright, so what do we got here? Uh, well, I'm not sure which one we want, really. Do you have the Air Force? The Aeronaut? I did choose Chairman Woman Amelia Tremblay. Propaganda to be effective must be believed. To be believed, it must be credible. To be credible, it must be true. If you want the people of a nation to believe in something, then you must first give them something to believe in. Giving so that something is precisely what Chairwoman Amelia Tremblay is responsible for. Every post or speech and every bit of news is first filtered through her before it sees the public. If you want to give someone the right idea, then you must figure out what first what that idea is. Amelia Tremblay knows what the right idea is. She also knows how to first figure it out, but also how to put that idea into someone else's mind. With Amelia at the head of our information department, we can ensure that every single person in a great nation has the tools to build a better future. With Amelia at the head of propaganda, we can keep everyone safe from the glass of capitalism. With Amelia as chairwoman, the power of Ralcom will never be questioned. Propaganda is amazing. People can be led to believe anything. Cool. So we got more weekly manpower, daily uh, wars, uh, daily political power, and a little more wars, but which I think is pretty good overall. And I'll go with steel soldiers. A little bit less defense, but it is what it is. Keep these dignons in place. I don't really want to use them. I would use them just in case for backup, maybe. So. Now I'll see what you can do. Help them out. They want to die. Okay. Where are you headed to? Keep these guys close together. There's more strength than when we were all together. You know what? You can run your help out. Screw it. Where are you going, son? Nowhere. We're getting attacked. Okay. Fresh division, yeah? Good. Beat the crap out of him. Another robot division. I love it. Good. Woo! He did that before they got in there. Stay there. Cool. Um, infrastructure's not bad. How about uh, unleashing the nullified instincts? Many of our robot brains have some semblance of human instinct inside, though they can't apply it as well as in their robotic chassis. No doubt they'll learn faster than that than they would otherwise. Taking advantage of this will be key. Absolutely. Fast, fast, fast. Oh, you could definitely win there. It's only militia. Do, this, do their militia have anti tank? No, they do not. That's good to see. You do that. Another robot. Love it. That extra thousand uh, support robots. Very, very, extremely strong. Love it. They're just going to get themselves really hurt here. They're just fine with us. As much as the force in defense, I mean, I guess that's what I would do if I were them too, but still. Uh, special forces, capacity multiplier. I'm not sure which special force we're really going to be using here. Because I already got this one, which is what I wanted in the first place. I guess what, you know, let's just be through the robot stuff. That might be the best ticket. Beautiful. A robot army. Double down. Double down even harder. Good. You all are going to do this. You are going to go here and do that, though. They attack us. It's fine. It's totally okay. Nice. Love it. Camus Survivalists. Yeah, just beat him up. Another one? Jesus Christ, we're making these guys fast. I love robots. So that's case we probably don't need you then. It's because we started with four divisions. That's just not very much at all. So now we're out of robots. Not ideal. Okay then. There we go. Yeah, 
you there. Uh, our communism is the best kind of communism. The vicious proletariats, though these other believers, they do not see eye to eye with my analyses, my vision. I will show them the way they know best. With amical blood, yet brutal force. A song for the front, if you want to do this, please go ahead. I'm going to grab war support. And are we there yet? Holy cow, is this one tile or two tiles? How do you not... Ugh, I wanted this tile, you ding dong. Well, yeah, it's still it's a division that can be destroyed. Mm -hmm. Well, Warhawk, we don't really probably need him. It's, it's okay to be anti-war, however, it's not okay to be completely delusional and detached from reality. Power, corruption, war. No three things go more hand in hand. These are the things that drive him Marie Garandi. Well, I, and while I find it most vile, I must be forced to work with such a swine because otherwise the arm industry and big grass would be non-existent. Not only do we need firearms for the human conscripts, but even robots need weapons to fight. To replace Henry Gundry would mean that we would need to replace the weaponry that he provides with other means, so until that day, we must suffer through with his crocodile. Very well, I shall grant him more power if it means more guns. I will sacrifice my pride if I wish for big grass to become more than what it is. Just you wait, Mr. Grundy. I have the most elaborate plan for your demise. There is no shortage of war hawks in politics. Be careful what you wish for if you don't want to be at the front yourself. Chairman, Chairman or Chairwoman Ber Bernadetta Barley. Supposing is good, but finding out is better. While well, I cannot be not denied that Chairwoman Bernadetta Barley is a genius, her vision often leads to her, ex expose, or, or, or leads to her exposed contradictions in our ideology. And while it would be a good idea to get rid of her permanently, such an action would be difficult due to her immense position of power as chairwoman. However, if it's not all bad, her research has brought about many great developments for our nation. Not only that, but she has indirectly furthered the grasp of communism on Canada with her inventions. Whether it be speeding up the process of converting humans to robo-brains or developments of new uh, platings for our battle bots, Barley's without a doubt demonstrated value. It can be said that giving her more power would be a dangerous idea, but such risks must be taken if we truly want our ideology to fall to open minds. Uh, uh, continue research for now, Bernadetta. Uh, for one day, I have no doubt that Big Grass will no longer need you, and then I, Relcom, will be there. After all, the ultimate goal of research is not objectivity, but truth. No chairwoman, Victoria Burns. Our party in the country was needed, and will continue to need trust, sympathy, and support of our people abroad. Victoria Burns rose to a position of power over decades of her speeches to the people. She was able to give spirit and inspire those with her words alone. Not only has her speeches put fires in the hearts of the people of Big Grass, but also she's inspired robots from across Canada to flock to Big Grass. She not only brings forward the, forward the revolution with her words, but convinces others to do it for herself, or do it for her. It would be an understatement to say that she is extremely loyal to the cause. She's driven the knowledge and power of communism into countless peoples that live in the country. Victoria Burns isn't done yet either. With just a little more power, the chairwoman could increase the efforts of speeches across Big Grass and bring even more people into the fold. Long live peace between peoples and the Big Band. The world is full of obvious things. Men had considered Big Band a comrade, but his musical ways had landed him in a flurry of trouble from the Pelota Bureau. According to the contemporary musicians, his style was too blue, truly horrific. Now I find myself a homeless dissident moving from station to station and trying to find work in the shadows of bars such as Speak Easy. Perhaps we can end his anti-party behavior by hiring him as a commissioner of musical arts. I think that's great. Speak Easy. Funny. I love the devs. They've done a fantastic job with the 5.0 update. Truly fantastic. What, literally one of the best devs. Some of the best devs ever. Oh, you're here. Well, I got rid of you, son. Come on, hurry up and kill this one off. The ladders are nice. Well, maybe that might be a bit ahead of time for this one here. Who this in instead? Hello? Well, alright. Yeah, start moving in. Sprout this way. Hopefully, we can do something here. There you go. 
We got, god dang it, encircled. Well, I guess we're gonna go this way and go all the way around them. Just keep these guys in place for the most part. Strathcon is gonna be a big old enemy of ours, aren't they? Emergency the construction measures. Our exterior has long been neglected from the, our time recovery. The town of Vapor Inroads is now, thus the enemy reaches first. Good. Tank platoons, frontline platoons. Frontline platoons include what? Pretty much everybody. Except robots. Power armor, special ops. Yeah, they, they're literally just gonna kill themselves. I mean, don't get me wrong, I like that, don't get me wrong. Help them out. The faster you can destroy them, the better. North Redmond. It's finally waiting up there. Special, whatever special forces are dying to us. It's great. Keep these guys in place. Good. That will be done very soon. Too. Wow. You are like doing what I like usually like to do and go all the way around enemies. But all right. We've lost 22. Pioneer Company's still not really that close to be taken out, so. Good, they got one done up there. Please do not get encircled up here. Are you freaking kidding me? Browski. How about we don't do that? How about you don't do that and you go up here? And then take out that militia division. It's not it's only militia division, but still. Wait, no, you go here. And no, you go here. Good. No longer just going to be straight up attacking. You're actually moving down here to take these guys up first. Okay. Interesting move. Very interesting move. Alright, so we got the Pioneer Company, that's good. They can have demands, but, I mean, we're at war with them, so it doesn't really matter. There you go. We can focus on the top here, maybe? And then push it from there? Yeah, we ain't gonna be pushed around by you. There you go. Whew. Burgeoning paranoia. The enemy must not be allowed to breach our ancient sanctum. I'll be personally overseeing the advancement of my rural brains armada. The Union mind shall prevail this day. Nice. A lot of good across the river, though. Nice. Because they're fighting the Lord's Ministry, right? Or they, they beat them. Oh, they're still fighting them, too. Alright. Contact the loss. Not ideal. Good. Good. 
Let me kill it off. 2,000. Almost 3,000. Very ideal. Keep finding them and keep harassing them. I think we're doing very well here. What if surrounded the capital? Yeah, I guess not. All right, whatever. Hey, we got him. Very nice. This is what you gotta do to them, right? Growing fear. Uh, the others must uh, believe. The other believers are formidable. Though I fear it, perhaps I must. Yes, I must work even harder. How I know not, but perhaps simply hitting faster shall work. Hey, we get more attack. I like. It. I like it. Bars of the apocalypse. Are they humans? Um. They're free thinkers. I think, right? Recruit tyrant, yeah. I don't believe these people. Honest speaker? I, I like the honest speaker, that's not bad either. Uh, I don't want people to support, so we're gonna go with you. They have up to 15 divisions, we have 13, so we're, we're roughly the same. They, oh, they actually have a tank division! I did not know that about them. That, oh god, they are using that tank division pretty wisely right now. Very smartly. Go in. Now they got a couple of militias though. So it's some good, some bad. Good to know when I play them eventually. Okay, we gotta really encircle these guys. Come on. Let's do better than this. North Redmond, nice. Oh, oh we capitulate something too. Trade node, begin a route, yes. It's not much. But it is what it is. Oh, Red Deer is also. Oh, man. Start making some money here. Thirty-three. That's pretty nice. Go to signals. What else we got? Yes, please. Quality. I don't know which one's better. More HP, which is good. Main and support units. That's a plus flat 20. Refined construction, robot, hardness, defense, armor. Quantity. It's not bad. Factory output, reinforced rate. Experience losses, losses. Yeah, I'm going to go quality. Definitely going quality for this one. Um, can we throw in CNC bots? Hurts our armor just a little bit, but I think it'd be worth it. Yep. Almost nine more organization. Why would I not choose that one? I just hold real quick. So where are we at? What have we got here? Let them spread out, let us spread out. Let's see what we can do to maximize our efficiency. Smoking or sneaking out of the casket. Organizing the operations of scattered capitalist mines from the feeble bodies will allow us allow our ranks to flourish yet again. Though many of them will have ran from the loving familial brace of communism, we shall become our mission yet again to teach these wayward non-contributors how to work amongst among each other. You find them, just beat them. Except like, like this, just beat the crap out of them. I want you to go around them. We have a lot of political power too. That's right, command. Oh God, Comrade Keg. Uh, report up for duty. The people's tapmaster distributes only the finest oil cocktails to his fellow mechanicals. Even those basic of the Robco models aspire to teach us stoic and heroic stature. 
Robotic and human minds alike have always valued a good smile and source of propaganda. Some question of promoting safe funded beverages that loosen your circuits is moral. I personally spit on those dissidents and use the brain fluids to fill one more keg. Red Dread. I am the law. Every dirty comic fears the oncoming wrath of blue and true justice. Low to the capitalizers, what dread trials inspire to every low life red. Built from nothing but the scrap remains of former work bots who managed to evade detection from Railcom by reviving old serial numbers that disguise his existence. As rapidly sprayed blue point is the only thing that his opponents see before being turned into fuel for the capitalist fire. Still not bad. The Neuralizer. Uh, the body is a, poison, a prison that every mind must escape from. The Neutralizer, or Neuralizer, was once a great neuroscientist before the atomic fire. Said now he stirs the common by ridding humans of the weak, fleshy corpses and moving them into the healthy metal cas casings. As origins may be questionable due to the ties of the capitalists who con converted Relcom into his fine form, but the electroshock therapy has cleared the former doctor of any loyalties outside of, of communism. A deputizer, law incarnate, law in its purest form, can only be delivered with a bullet to the head. The deputizers serve the Camino Act districts well throughout the years, as he's rounded up all that question in Relcom's authority. Delivering the will of the all sighing eye of the law to all who dare break it, is managed to keep a tight grip on the few populations still, uh, still roam the big grass. Under Rokom's watchful eye, captures organic convicts and put to work in his militia. Their undying loyalty is guaranteed through a concept known as mortality. The excavator. March ever armor behind me, I shall be the shield of our nation. The excavator is a hulking behemoth that puts himself before his own men. He's a fine example of how an officer in the Red Army should act, however. I worry that his inspiring example might be inspiring the wrong people. He inspires not only the Red in our nation, but also the Blue. It would be in our best interest to relegate him to a lower rank in the army so that he may die a hero's death shielding his comrades. Hmm. And the murderizer. Kill, 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 but not so much. Due to being relegated to such a low position in our forces, the murderizer couldn't realize his full killing potential and felt sad, but even that was enough to mask his ever growing hatred. So I guess for now, as much as I want to do with these guys, I'm 15% is great. Uh, let's get more political power for Relcom up there. Well, look how much we beat the crap out of this guy. I love it. Then we're going to surround this tank. Help them out. They must die. They must. There's no other option, but they must die. Should be that good. Go in. Oh, that was way easier than I thought it would be. Now you guys hold here. Oh, you actually already won there. Marwain. Huh. Alright, well. You're doing really well. I'm gonna tell ya. Tanks aren't as thick and as strong as I thought they would be. Odd. But alright then. Yeah, let's just go in then. Should be okay. Interesting. Can't even pierce them, but we're doing really well against them. There you go. We got them. Capture the Warren. We are a really big old friggin' thing here. Well, no vampire anyways, whatever. Leaving these ancient walls. Halls. For too long we've peeked out of our crevices in our factorium. Factorium walls. If the incessant capitalist scum will not come to us, then it falls to us to meet them halfway. It's time to leave this factory. Capitalized or be darned. We ain't going to manage you, god dang it, you bunch of suckers. Thirteen robot divisions, nice. Are we fantastic? No, but we'll do what we can. Support robots. Well, I'll eventually get some heavy lifter robots. I'm gonna do that one too. How much stability too? Cleaning out the lines. We're clearing the lines. In order for production of metal shells to resume, and for the wonders of communism to once again grace his casket's calls, we must clear out the rubble and destruction from the capitalizer's previous attacks. Oh, that's where the those guys come in. Yeah. Take 40 cases. We are swimming and all that stuff. Nice. I love communism. Can we like just find these guys too? 
Wet us given. As Lloyd missed, Mister. You do have a little bit of money. Of all things, union. The old CPF leadership fractured on its own weakness. More than 200 years, and all they had to show for was internal conflict. Mere men of flesh, working alone under their own desires, cannot properly exploit their environment for maximum productive output. How human want can only be abolished when all of us work together in union. The big grasp we know is union machine. It doubles the rate at which manpower is converted into robo brains, including the boots that we have completed, avoiding the capitalizer's gaze. Oh, look at that. Union of the machine. Oh, whoops. Well, okay, the first comrades still live, brother. Many of the old robo brains and other sort of machines that are employed still yet remain, trapped under the rubble and kept safe beneath thickets of searing cold ice. So it's time to take our hammers and sickles and to carve them free of our time in prisons. Well, at least that's nice. Get some immediate compliance, and that'll help us lower our uh, resistance across here. The Red Scare returns. Earl Cummins returned to his habits of years of yore. As agents will roam the countryside, bringing them brains and to a purpose and to loyal members of the proletariat. If the workers cannot be efficient, then he would make them so. Chief of the Navy, Deep Sea, Shen Hai. Oh. The cold not only brings rust, but also loneliness. Deep Sea was once a proud AI aboard the Long March 11, a nuclear submarine in station in preparation for the attack on the United States. Upon the great fire scorching the Earth, Deep Sea courageously launched a nuclear payload into the fascist country. The nukes landed somewhere around Las Vegas, Nevada, likely striking fear directly into the hearts of the simple-minded capitalists, attempting to stuff themselves with the biases of such a disgusting city. But unfortunately, while the Earth was struck with the power of the Red Army's military might, so did the waves and oceans boil and burst, uh, uh, tugging deep sea and the Long March 11 ever inward until he lost his way back home. Even most of the brave Cuba board were murdered and left as victims by the counterattack of the capitalists' unnecessary nuclear arsenals. Beaten, battered, and broken, and left without the crew he held dear, Deep Sea thought that all was lost and he was left to rot in the elements until 200 years later. <clears throat> Rokon, being the young, brave revolutionary that he got, was that he was, got straight to work in efforts to bring Deep Sea to a nearby frozen river and repair the Long March 11 by his own hands alone. Uh, he did not even use. They don't even need to use worker bots. In return, Deep Sea was forever indebted to the great leader. And now to this day, Deep Sea watches over the lands of Big Grass looking to defend its peoples from capitals and dreaming of one day returning to the ocean. And the land is born in with intent of spreading stories of a charming leader who gave him a second chance. I love all the stories that they have here. It's fantastic. Thank you developers for doing this. This is just... Love what the developers do. Love them. Love them. But don't get too close to them. Just close enough. They deserve your love and praise. They do very well. And you're... Oh, oh my god. The frick is this? I like this. I don't know what it is, but it has legs. And I love legs. Okay, anyways. <clears throat> Chief of the Air Force, Aeronaut. Heaven can be reached if you fly high enough. The Aeronaut may appear to be a brainless robot, but under all that scrapped airplane panel lies a brain that dreams of the skies above. He has served the commune diligently, as he trains an ever-increasing armada of out automated aces to soar high in the sky. <clears throat> Being entirely anchored to the ground hasn't stopped his metal hulk from running simulations of the heavens for weeks on end. The aeronaut is one of the few individuals Rokum has pushed his hard felt faith into, as he knows his passion for the great blue above overcomes any obstacle we put in his way. Oh, you know what's for here? It's still a little loud to me. There you go. Ibot, Ibot, what do you see? With well, our renewing strength. Unleashing what iBots we have left over from our last life will help us secure the region outside of our facility and vanquish any ne'er do wells who wish to get in our way. Nice. The damage guesses goes down too, which is I like too. <clears throat> ah, that's a little out of town, but not by much. Stability, yes. Oh, they're established? I thought I said no to them. Humans. The lights upon the hill. Look, cried the wanderer, the old factory sat upon the hill, he sputtered, spurring his brother to take a glance. Their lights came back on that factory that sat upon a hill, replacing corrupt files. <coughs> Many of the files, especially those pertaining to the information on building the perfect union mine, were uh, destroyed during the capitalizer's last attack. With some care taken, we may be able to restore these files and with them a schematics of our ch careful choosing. Flicking the right switch. Though much was destroyed in the casket, many so of my believed, beloved switches still remain. With my eye bots and robo brains, this union mind will surely be able to find the right switch to bring the skull of the casket back to life once and for all. They're just here to kill our manpower off, that's all.
Mm. Four of them. That's it, ladies. Your one minute break is over. If you want another, you'll have to pay. Pickford's ability to kick workbox into a workforce, a working force to be proud of the foreman demonstrates what a productive member of society really is. There's something Relcom appreciate is its honesty, productivity, and loyalty, and the foreman demonstrates all those virtues in spades. He's able to really speak to the hearts of his workers and inspire them to forgive all their motherland, with them as captain of an industry that work mighty machine will never falter. The coals in the furnaces, ever burn brighter with each robot that comes off the line, soon production of robots will halt and those same fires will burn the capitalists to ashes. Huh. Or fossil fuel. Drink up, boys. This fuel is brought to you by Uncle Sam and his tax-paying workbox. Although his allegiance to the capitalizer is no secret, fossil fuel and the rest of those gas bots pose too great of a threat for Rocom to go after. Not only do the gas bots represent a large amount of the workbots within the big grass, but they also produce a sizable amount of oil and energy that runs the entire nation. <clears throat> uh, although Rocom is reluctant to give them any more power, he must recognize that if he wants to build a healthy worker's machine, he must have the fuel to run it. Those will be no doubt give more power to their capitalizer supporters, but the trade-off is arguably worth the risk. If, it, if the reach of communism may be extended, then the fires in its belly will boil over and scorch the ground for it is, it, it is to walk on. Peak efficiency. Nice. <clears throat> the hammer. With the backing of our great nation, we can put even the back world back together. We're known for its excellency in repair and construction. The hammer is one of the pillars of the workbots. He has a large amount of skilled mechanics and uses a combined might to lay the building blocks for a great industry. With the unity of big grass, there isn't anything that cannot be built or repaired. Neither rain nor sleet nor snow will impede the workbots of this nation. Uh, if it is broken, it will be fixed. If it is destroyed, it will be replaced. If it doesn't exist, then we'll build it together. That's not bad. It's interesting. Not a ton of you know, free roaming stuff there that we can really use. Uh, what else we got here? The sickle. The right arm of communism. <coughs> You reap what you sow. If that's the case, then we'll sow the seeds of an unending revolution and reap a society greater than the one before when it is finally over. You cannot expect to build a country without the fuel to fuel it. Not only is the food useful for what organics are still left in our nation, but even leftover produce can be turned into biofuel and such a great amount of food is sure to attract even more disgusting humans to our cause. We will surely convert these people graciously to robo-brains, but for the time being we can sit back and enjoy the fruits of our labor. Corn, potatoes, beets, and radishes let us plant the seeds for a great rebellion and feed the men to foster and grow it. Rokom knows the workbox will, who t will toil in the fields bringing home the crop, putting bread on the table, and... Hold on, there's one more here. And... An idea of hope in the mind. Hey, it's that energy schematics. It's not bad. And Chairman Wayne Buskey. Oh, the money brings power, but also ignorance. Chairman Wayne Buzzkey ascended to his position. Uh, power through many deals. Sometimes they were mere gambles, and other times they were sure to pay off. Through it all, all Wayne re demonstrated his ability was to sway people one way or another, depending on which way was more profitable, of course. Wayne Buzzkey, however, is not the man he lets, lets on to be. Wayne's a diehard supporter of the capitalizer and believes in all the ideals of capitalism. He'll like nothing more than to discover a path through the sharp words toward the throne of big grass, and that's precisely what he intends to do. <clears throat> Although Rokom claims to be all-knowing, he can't possibly know that one of his closest supporters is, in actuality, the very thing he seeks to destroy. The fact is that Wayne is getting one deal closer with each day climbing his way to the seat of power. All that's left is for the final deal to, to be brokered, and all stock in Rokom will come crashing down. Do we have stocks here? I don't think we have stocks here. Do we have stocks? I don't know. And my version of communism? A stock market? I think not. But my voice cracks. Oh, we tried. We can't get rid of them, though. Well, I guess we're going to go communist. Left arm and the right arm. Uh, I don't want people support for this campaign, so I guess we get the foreman. And I guess yeah, I tried to get rid of them. I thought I thought I seriously clicked on getting rid of them. Oh, well, I guess I was supposed to do stuff there too. Oh well, whatever. Help us get more fleshies. Whatever. <clears throat> The ideal workforce. The ideal workforce truly is one that cannot fathom working outside of the system. Given their utmost to contribute and acknowledge the greater needs of society over themselves, if they cannot see this way by flesh, then they shall do so with metal, just as I have. Nice. Very good. Uh, I don't mind putting anti tank on robots, maybe. And maintenance. Those two are very, very important. I kind of want to see if I can beat up Safe Haven now. If I actually beat Great Stampede, look at that.
Hey, look at that. Sophisticated construction tech. Clearing the lines we read. Keeping mind of how to keep minds. We wish to ensure a steady and resurgent growth of the Union Mile. We'll need to take amicable steps to secure a proper power plan for their miserable little capitalist hovels to our lovely little casket. The casket demands more. <clears throat> in order to restore the Union Mine, and to work in capacity, we must have further cleaning up our pops and other such minuscule details, unless we have an incident similar to the last time. Robots train. Then again, we can also probably start calling stuff here too, can't we? Yeah, in a little bit, yeah. The have for me? Good. No, not good, but whatever. Enter Del Sol. Super heavy robots. Wow, 101 more armor. So you lose a little bit of recovery, right? More, more breakthrough, more hardness, more defense, way more soft second heart attack. Uh, energy cell capacity, less organization. These are two, they're eight combat width. The organization's not very good. We can maybe, can we skip the heavier bots? Because you need this anyways for like organization. Do we have any of these super heavy bots? Make your armor shoot up quite a bit. Let's go with that. We're gonna need a lot of these super heavy bots. We need more composite materials too. Do they have anti tank on them? They don't. Oh. That'd be nice. <clears throat> Overclocking the casket. He gads. The casket alone cannot provide it as is. Even the slightest bit of extra production will give us an advantage. Strings must be pulled, but it shall be done. Nice. What do we got working here? Civvies? It's not a bad idea. What else we got? Bottle caps. Anti tank rifles. Very good. Let's grab maintenance. Gear us conviction. Look, workspaces. Grab some of this. Oh, what else we got here? Well, the eight over team. Commander Keg. Retro changing. No people support for this one. That's not bad. The neuralizer. Well, we're not using infantry or anything like that here, so that wouldn't really make sense. And we don't want more people support, so we're going to put offensive and uh, neuralizer. I want more war. I really want more war right now. Still out 200 some. CNC bots. <clears throat> Can we throw more on, please? Oh, we're going to have even more, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You betcha. Ah. How much do we need? 47? That's not bad. Manpower's looking decent. Do we help our factories? Yes, we do have one energy tank now. It's not bad. Could be better, though. Flesh is weak. Oh, God. You, God, you know the flesh is weak. And eventually, we're going to do avoiding the capitalizer's gaze. Those are quite some time. There's no doubt within my giga brain that the capitalizer still roams these lands. Caution, nay, preparation must be made for the arrival. To have a respect or repeat of the last time would simply be too embarrassing, then we'll have end of the capitalizer. Here's the real calm schemes were bearing the, their greatest root yet. A triumphant and trumpet sounded through all the hounds of the ca Scarlet Casket. For a moment, all was inside the production facility. Not a line did move, nor did a bot think the capitalizer had returned. So I think we'll end it there, and we'll start the next episode probably with that, or going to war with a great stampede, or something like that. And Having a good old time with all of us here as we call more stuff. So, if you enjoyed our first episode playing as uh, Big Big Grass under Relcom, please consider leaving a like. Subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow as we will see what we can take out. Safe haven. Thanks for watching. Have a great communist rest of your day.